Oh, this is is this back to front? Yeah. It's mirror image. It is mirror image. Okay, right, okay. What I thought I'd do is I thought I'd pop on and I would... Uh, I've just been noodling and uh, putting something together for uh, a student and I've just been... Uh, put this lick together, this little run, and it's it's a nice way of moving out of your bog standard pentatonic. So say you play something in your pentatonic that is kind of a cliche sort of uh, pentatonic survival lick. <laughs> say you've got something in that fifth position, we'll just keep we'll just keep it in the fifth position. This is what we're looking at. Um and and it's a beautiful sort of sound that we can <laughs> We can tap into here, and what I'm actually going to do is I'm going to drop into the D harmonic minor. And what the D harmonic minor uh, does is it's like the normal natural minor, only it has this luscious uh, seventh note here. There's the tonic, there's the root note. Root note to root note. Now, if you know anything about the notes in scales and chords, what essentially they do is they either create tension or they create release. Uh, so, so, you know, root note over a D minor chord is going to sound uh, like you've reached home. Yeah, so, but other notes are going to have a different uh, effect. And I call it, and I call it emotional value because essentially music is the language of emotion. If you kind of get that premise, then all the notes and chords that you play essentially are trying to represent some kind of emotion. Now, it makes sense, instead of having this kind of blunderbuss approach uh, with your scales where you, you bookend the scale, you know, if you're one of these people that, that starts here, and ends here on your scale, then you're kind of missing the point, yeah? Because that's when everything starts to sound silly. But, what you can do is just start somewhere else in the scale, you know? So if we, if we kind of start somewhere else in the scale, then uh, it's gonna give you an opportunity to sound a little bit more musical and less scaly. So, on that premise, what we're gonna do is I'm gonna play a kind of kind of an exit from a standard uh, bluesy type lick. So if you imagine that I'm there, that's giving me standard sort of blues idea. And then what I do is at the seventh fret of the G string, I'm going to hit this seventh, this major seventh. That's actually going T do. And here's, here gives you an idea of the licks. So what happens is this enables you then to descend the neck with that pattern, but then have something, an alternative to go back up the neck with, to go up the pitch as with, yeah? So when I mean up the neck, I mean that way in pitch. When I mean down the neck, it's how the pitch goes. So, what's the pattern look like? The pattern looks like this. So if you've got your guitar out, uh, then that's great. If you're not, get your guitar out. Got it? Okay, rewind, right. So, what we do is we start at the ninth fret with the pinky. <laughs> Yeah, now you've got a choice. If you've got a massive stretch, then you're going to find this easy. Me, I've got stumpy sausages. There is no reason why you can't play this stuff. There's always a way around it. And what it does, is, in my opinion, is it helps you to come up with your own phrasing style and your own, your own voice. Um, because I struggle, what I do is I cheat and I find it easier to just slide to a note. So I'm going nine on the thin E string, six on the thin E string, and then five on the thin E string. So you can see there's three notes on that string. Then if you look at the B string, what I do is another three note per string idea, and this goes eight, six, eight, six, five. 
And what's good is uh, you can, you, when you do these, you can you can put little trills in for decoration. It's a kind of a feature of harmonic minor. It's almost obligatory that you would use this. Uh, wherever there's thing, uh, uh, um, uh, a minor second or a semitone or a half step, if you're in America, you could put a trill on there. Um, then you could put a trill on there. Now, what I did there is I moved down to the G string. These two strings here are three note per string. Yeah, so we've got that. Nine, six, five, eight, six, five. Then we move to seven on the G string. And then what we do is we're gonna hit the major seventh of that scale. Yeah, and the thing about sevenths is they're much like thirds, just like um, when you think of a major chord being happy and a minor chord being happy, what's defining that is the third of the chord. Well, sevenths do the same thing. They are what are known as colour notes. And those colour notes will make everything that you play sound lovely. And it means you can land on them. They sound great. Yeah? But you're not resolving. If I go up a semitone... You can hear that the whole uh, lick now has resolved back to that. Because what you hear, what you're expecting is a D. Yeah, so I can play that. There, and I play the hell out of that. And if I put some vibrato on it, then that adds more drama. And when you put vibrato, I mean, why do we put vibrato on notes? Is to make the note stand out. It's to make to say, make it say, "Listen to me, I'm great." Yeah. So, so what you can do is you go really wide on it. Right. The next. So if I play that three part, them three strings. That's the first three strings of that pattern, uh, and I'd and I'd practice that a little bit on it. So. Maybe practicing that bit because you've got those lovely little possibility possible uh, trills there. Just to help you to get you your, your uh, way around it. Right, and then the next bit is to go eight, seven, five on the D string, and I'm using my pinky, third and first finger to do that. So you might be one of those three, two, one fingers, middle, uh, ring, middle, first. I prefer to use my pinky. And then we play exactly the same pattern on the uh, A string. And that's worthwhile playing that pattern. Just get that pattern down. And then what we do is we throw that seventh back in the mix here at the fourth fret. So we get. And that gives you a, a very, very convenient note because what happens now is that this note is kind of foreshadowing the uh, arpeggio we're going to play. If I go. That is actually the third of my A7 uh, dominant arpeggio, my dominant seventh arpeggio, that I'm going to ascend, go back up again, so I can move myself from... There, right, which is really cool. Funny thing is, as well, uh, with this... Uh, this uh, that harmonic minor, the, the major second that the... the this note here, seventh fret on the A string, which is part of the harmonic minor scale, is also the fifth of this dominant arpeggio. So, so it's already in the mix. So it's gonna sound it sounds really natural to exit the harmonic minor descending and then enter the dominant seventh uh, with uh, this uh, with this dominant seventh arpeggio pattern. Because it's an arpeggio, it's going to sound different from a scale. So... 
Right, so I'm there. Now what I can do then is now, because I've got there, it's home. So you can hear, I'm playing an A5 power chord. Yeah, so I'll play the D. So I'm getting this little, lovely little cadence here. So I go. So then what I do is outline that uh, triad. Root, third, fifth. That's a major third. And then I've got this flat seventh here. Yeah. There's the octave, root to octave. If you don't know any of these, look at the videos that I have um, uh, to dealing with caged octaves. Because the caged octaves, they're really super important because uh, uh, if sometimes you want to reiterate a note to kind of define the statement that it is that you're saying emotionally. You want to say... Sometimes you get guitarists who double up on a note just to say, this is the home note. If you listen, home, home, home. I played the, I played the same note essentially three times. And it really defines that we are home. And now we're away from home. So, here we go. So we've got root, major third, fifth, flat seventh, now the cool thing is, this is one note per string. This is two note per string on the on, on the E string. On the A string, we've got two note per string. We've got four, fret four, fret seven. And then, moving on to the D string, we go, we've got another two note per string um, uh, idea. And this goes five, seven. So we've got. Pretty cool as it is. What I like to do with this as well is slightly power mute it. Puts a little bit more crunch in it. Put a bit more gain on that. Yeah? A bit too much gain. Now the cool thing is, is just like we had one note per string there, we have one note per string here on the sixth fret of the G string. That's super handy because it means what we can do is if you hammer on from five to seven Yeah, that's what watch my picking here. I can pick down I can do sweet picking I can do so I'll pick once I get three strings in one go on this one, which is really nice if you do it alternate It's fine as well So but essentially go from the G to the that's uh, from the D to the G to the B string Right, so, so I quite like that, and and this is back to our um, seventh note for our harmonic minor again. So you could break the scale up and uh, uh, the arpeggio up there and descend down a little bit. And the idea is not to just follow the pattern slavishly; it's to uh, kind of like stop halfway through, catch yourself, and go back a bit, and and you know mix it up. So. Uh, and I'm using uh, fi um, positional playing here where I use one finger per fret. And then I get this fifth fret of the B string. Then the eighth fret of the B string. Yeah. The lovely little pattern that enables me to do uh, 16th notes. Yeah. Yeah, and you can mix them up with your blues ideas as well. And there's the root note again. But here's the difference. What we're going to do is we're going to reach up to that major third. Stumpy fingers here. He's going to jump to it. Yeah, so sometimes I slide up to it and finish it off with an arpeggio at the top. Which sounds pretty cool as well. But I could also alternatively. So you can see what I'm doing is I'm linking a harmonic minor scale. There. 
into a dominant. Dominant seventh arpeggio. Root, third, fifth. And a right, okay guys, as usual, what I'll do is I will uh, drop a PDF in here underneath in the description so that you can download that, look at the patterns. I'm going to do it in picture format because I think tab is hard to, to visualise. Everything on the guitar is little shapes. Triangle. Triangle. Trapezoid. So, that ends today's broadcast. Uh, see you later. Uh, have fun with that and uh, thanks for tuning in. Drop a comment, like, subscribe, all that nonsense. Okay, see you later. Bye.